Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you are doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today we're going to take a quick look at the Exorcism at the House of Moncton Falls. This is a game that I have had for a couple few years now, and I've, I've set it up a few times, I've played it a couple of times, and I just haven't gotten around to uh, making a video for it yet, and I decided to get it to the table today to do so. It is a pretty fun little game. It's very simple. It's a simple kind of lightweight uh, family style cooperative game. Uh, let's take a look at the box here and read a little bit about the game. Okay, so this says uh, something terrible. Something is terribly wrong in the rural town of Moncton, Vermont. A deep, colorless fog has swept across the hillside. Members of the community have gone missing, and once lush farmland is a dying. Locals believe that an ancient ghost haunting the old manor on the hill is to blame. They've asked you and your team of paranormal investigators to check it out and save the town. The Exorcism at the House of Monc Moncton Falls is a cooperative board game for one to five players. Take on the role of paranormal investigators and exercise a powerful wraith from the ancient home in Moncton, Vermont. Uh, one to five players and 60 to 90 minutes. This is a nice small box, kind of kind of a medium sized box. And in that uh, sense, it's a kind of a bigger game in a medium box. And I am enjoying it quite a bit. I absolutely love the way it looks. I love the black, white and red. It's very stark and bold. I'm a big fan of that. So what are you doing in this game? You are going to be taking on one of these investigators. Uh, you can even be a dog here, the Teddy, your animal friend. Uh, you can be the, the uh, FLGS manager, Ben Higgins, or the journalist, Amanda Klein. Uh, maybe a bodyguard, or a doctor, or a psychologist, a detective, a medium, an architect. And each one of these different characters will have a different starting place within the mansion that you are trying to exercise. Uh, each of these characters will have their own unique power. And each of the characters will have a task that they are especially good at that will produce more rewards when that task is complete. And so to win the game, you need to move throughout the uh, manor here, the mansion. And the mansion is laid out in a random uh, fashion each time. Same pattern, but a random number of cards. You're going to start with all of these face up uh, rooms. And these are rooms that are already unlocked. And then you will deal five to that deck of unlocked rooms, you will deal five random locked rooms. So each time you play the game, your mansion will have a different um, a different set of rooms. And some of the locked rooms include things like an escapable cell, a pit, a courtyard, a sunroom, storage room, a bar, a garden, a conservatory, a yawning portal, an altar room, dining room, crypt, and a void. And as you are moving your pawns, each of your uh, little characters are going to be uh, depicted by these just absolutely charming little standees. I love these guys so much, and there are quite a few of them. Uh, in the solo game, you play as one main investigator, and then you are joined by a, a, a secondary. So you have a primary and a secondary, and you kind of take your turns together. In the solo game, you have five actions to split amongst your two characters. Any items or things you pick up can be shared amongst the two characters. It's a shared pool, but only your primary character can use those items. And then in a regular cooperative game, each one of the players is going to be playing one investigator with three actions. Additionally, you're going to have three randomly selected characters at the beginning of the game. Right now I have the baby telepath the video store owner and the photographer and these are considered lookout characters and they are going to be stationed outside the foyer of the house and they are on lookout and this is really cool because when one of your characters dies they get uh flipped upside down or, or uh, they get tapped basically exhausted on the outside of the manor and then one of these uh auxiliary characters 
these sec or these um, lookout characters, then they take the place of that ex of that investigator, and they continue on investigating, trying to exercise the spirits out of this house. And there are a number of ways to lose. There's one way to win. To win, you have to complete the exorcism of the house on Moncton Falls, and the way you do that is by um, taking care of these tasks by completing these various tasks from this task deck and by doing random things in the room in order to get enough of these white exorcism uh, tokens. And you need 30 of those to win the game. Uh, the way you lose the game is if all of your characters are get, they get, they get uh, knocked out and you lose all three of your um, lookout characters. So that's one way to lose. Another way to lose is in typical kind of co-op pandemic style, there is a threat management system and there are going to be these darkness tokens that are going to spread around the house. And those are spread by flipping over these uh, darkness cards and they were gonna tell you which rooms are going to be infected by darkness. Anytime a room is infected by four or more of these darkness tokens, then that room gets shrouded in the evil fog. And you will place one of these cards over those shrouded rooms. If you ever have to place a uh, shroud card over a room and there are no shrouded cards, then that is another way to, uh, to, to lose the game. Additionally, an additional way to lose the game is by running out of time, but the time is pretty generous and I think it does make a little bit of thematic sense because you're having to perform your tasks, complete these exorcisms uh, overnight, so you have eight hours. Each one of these D6 represents one hour and each pip represents 10 minutes and at the top of each round you're going to lower that by one to show how the time is ticking down. Additionally, there is this darkness token here and whenever you draw one of the darkness cards from the deck, that is going to move up and then on subsequent turns as it reaches levels two and three, you will be drawing more darkness cards. So the, uh, you know, the fires that you have to put out will be ramping up as the game uh, progresses. So on your turn, you will be moving from room to room. Uh, when you move into room, you into each room has a certain, a certain um, action that you can take. And when you take that action, usually you're going to be picking up uh, different kinds of tools. You can have uh, these like grimoire books here. You can find weapons that you can use, or you can find occult symbols or keys. And also, um, what are these candles? I believe I forget what the candles are actually called. Uh, detection tools. Okay, and so these aren't actually items, they just represent um, kind of abstract items that you are trying to collect. So you will be collecting sets of these various items in the same way that you collect sets in Horrified. And I think this game is a really good pairing with Horrified. I think Horrified is a better game. Um, the rules are definitely better written in Horrified and it's easier to learn, but the games are about the same weight. And as you collect these sets, you will also be collecting these various tasks. And the tasks will be things like wait until dawn or research demonology, enlist cultists, uh, bless the home, steal the blueprints. And to complete the tasks, each task will have a little bit of flavor text here. And you have to have those matching tools in your inventory in order to complete those tasks. And then you get those rewards. Keys can be used to unlock the locked doors in the mansion. You can always pass through a locked door on your way to an unlocked door but you can't use the room for its special ability until it is unlocked. And then as you complete tasks, you will also be receiving these exorcism points, and that is how you win the game. So while you are playing, though, there are these evil spirits like this, uh, this bull demon here, or this uh, ghost here, the devourer, and then we have the wraith here. And they will actually... Um, the the, uh, the Devourer and the Bull Demon, they start off the board. They are not in the game at the beginning of the game, but the Wraith starts in the attic. And then whenever you draw a Devourer card or the Bull Demon card, you will add that ghost to the attic. 
And then as you draw these cards here, these cards will tell you which rooms are, are infected by darkness. You match the pip of you match the number of the card to the number on the room. And then these arrows coincide, they correspond to the different colors of the ghosts. So the Wraith is black, the Devourer is white, and the Bull Demon is red. And then this tells you how they will move around the board. And so in this instance here, the uh, Devourer would move north and the Wraith would move to the west, but they are both in the attic. So the, really the only way they can move is if they move down. So uh, those guys are kind of at, out of commission right now. If I drew this card here, then the Devourer who is white would move one down. And so they would move here. And then if that uh, Devourer or the Wraith or the Bull Demon, if they ever move onto a spot with a character, that is when the character is knocked out and you have to replace that character with one of the characters on Lookout. I really like this Lookout system. It's very thematic. I can just imagine these characters outside the foyer of the house, you know, hearing all these weird, nasty noises coming from inside, hearing the other investigators performing all of these different rituals and exorcisms, and, and they're kind of like freaked out. And then all of a sudden, one of these characters comes out and collapses at the, in, at the front of the door, and then one of them has to volunteer to go in and take the place of that character. Really, a really neat idea there. Uh, additionally, there are also these plans and these are kind of like bonus things, really good things that you can get and you can use these as a free action in order to do all kinds of good things. So it's always good to get one of these or it's, it's always good to get as many of these as you possibly can. So my main character was Carpenter, was a carpenter, and uh, his name was uh, Josh, Josh Pitcher, and he's a carpenter. Uh, he started in the garage. He could do contract work, and he was good at law-abiding tasks. But he was joined by my secondary adventurer was his dog, Poirot. And um, he starts in the kitchen. I love that the dog's starting in the kitchen. And he's a master detective. And once per turn, the animal friend may reduce the time dice by one. So you could take 10 minutes of your time uh, to reveal the top card of the plan deck and give it to another player. That is super powerful. And I find that really useful, especially in a solo game. Uh, getting these is a real key to victory. But overall, I think the game is pretty fun. Uh, I think it's very simple. Um, again, it is a lot like Horrified in that you are really just uh, doing set collection with a theme, kind of like pasted on. But the theme is good. I love all the characters. The characters are just so cool. Um, I love the art. I love the all of the little standees. It's, just, it's a really charming game. It looks like something that they would have sold at like, I don't know, like Tower Records back in the day or something, or maybe even like Hot Topic or something, but not in a bad way, in a good way. Uh, <laughs> I really do enjoy the look of this game quite a bit. There's also a Kickstarter exclusive card, uh, Zombie Annabelle Smith, that you could play as a zombie character who actually can't be wounded. She can't be knocked out. Um, I think it would be cool maybe if like some of these were actual items that you could use doing doing certain things. But um, overall, I think the simplicity works in the game's favor. Uh, you do need to think a little bit in how you are moving around the room. You do need to keep track of these darkness tokens. So there is that kind of pandemic style uh, threat management, uh, traditional threat management mechanism going on. And you do need to think about how you're going to use the rooms on one of your actions because the actions you can take here are perform three actions. You can move two spaces. You can use your current room's action. You can give, take any number of tool cards from another player adjacent or in the same room. You can complete tasks and you can purify a room, which that is what, that is how you get rid of one of those tokens. And your actions do go fast. Like I have five actions in a, in a single player game and there's always like six or seven things that I want or need to do. And so you do need to think you need to be efficient on your turn, but it doesn't feel too much like a puzzle. It still feels a little bit like you can just kind of have some fun. But uh, yeah, overall, The Exorcism at the House of Moncton Falls is a pretty cool game. I believe that it is available still. I've seen some copies on eBay for around $30 or 
I think if you could find it for around 30 bucks and you're looking for a nice kind of lightweight, family weight uh, game in a uh, small to medium sized box and something a little bit off the beaten path. I don't hear a lot of people talking about the game. I know it wasn't a huge Kickstarter success. It was pretty small. I think it kind of like barely funded. As a matter of fact, all of the Kickstarter, all of the backers fit in pretty big text on just a couple pages. So you can see that there wasn't uh, probably not a lot of money went into this game. I would like to see more in this kind of world here. Um, more from these characters. I think like a little RPG with these characters would be super, super cool because they are so... Uh, they're just so charming. And that, that is kind of like the, the one word I would use to describe this game is that it is charming. And I really like games with a lot of charm. Uh, they just kind of fill me with joy to play. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the exorcism at the house of Moncton Falls. And we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.